Hi everybody, and welcome or welcome back to an Invisible and Invisible Illness Awareness Project. This week I wanted to talk about a few things that I felt that specialists should have known and told me. Um, of course, I forgive normal doctors for not knowing about every single rare disease, but with specialists I kind of think that they should know this stuff and make us aware of it. So first of all, when I was diagnosed with histamine intolerance and fructose malabsorption, I was given a booklet with um, foods to avoid, foods that were safe, kind of like what your life is gonna be like now with this disorder, um, that kind of stuff, and all this, all this useful information, right? And um, with the um, EUE, I didn't get anything like that at all. I didn't get any kind of information. Um, the only thing they told me was not to eat foods that I'm allergic to, and I'm like, well, of course I wouldn't be eating foods that I'm allergic to. And they gave me medication that I couldn't tolerate, and when I told them that, they just gave me a different one, and then a different one, and then a different one. Um, but nobody ever mentioned intolerances, and these like top five foods to avoid, and that that it can go so far beyond that to the point where you don't tolerate any foods at all. Like, they, there was no mention of that at all. And <clears throat> when even when my diet was very limited and I was just eating a couple of foods every single day, the exact same thing, um, nobody ever suggested um, protein drinks as sort of like a compliment to make sure I didn't end up malnourished. Nobody said anything about elemental feeds and like, hey, maybe try this for a week and see if your body can heal or something or, or you know, also as a substitute. I went to one doctor of internal medicine who referred me to another doctor of internal medicine who's supposed to be really highly specialized, who then referred me to a gastroenterologist who's also supposed to be highly specialized. And I went into her and said that I have like this pain on my wrist. Um, I can't stand the cold, and my toes go numb when it's cold outside. Um, all the stuff I can tell is definitely related to what I eat, because when I restrict my diet, and I hardly eat anything at all, I don't have these symptoms anymore. And she's telling me, no, that's not possible. Like, there's no way that this disorder could create symptoms outside of the gastrointestinal tract, which doesn't make any sense to me at all. Which brings me to the fact that I've asked so many doctors to help me apply for disability and they keep saying, well, the reason you can't work is the fatigue and we don't know what's causing the fatigue. It's just a symptom of something, but we don't know of what, so we can't, uh, we can't help you apply for disability until we diagnose what it is, but like they don't suggest doing any more tests. They just kind of leave it at that and sort of leave me hanging on my own, you know, <laughs> even though I'm telling them, like, I, I can't work, I'm, uh, I'm essentially homeless and, you know, begging people for money to stay alive, and, yeah, and, and that's not true anyways, because disability is based on your symptoms, not your diagnosis, um, but it just, it doesn't really make sense to me that, that they're acting so oblivious to all of this, but, there's lizards all over here. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting distracted watching all the little, little, tiny little lizards. Hold on. Come say hello. There he is. There's one of them. I do have to say, I think that we as patients have a unique resource in being able to contact each other online because whenever I'm in doubt, I can post a question like, hey, do you guys have these symptoms? And when I get like 50 people out of a support group of like, I don't know, something like three to 8,000 people um, saying, yeah, I have that too, then you kind of start to think, okay, maybe there is a correlation there. And that's something that doctors don't have because they only see you in consultation and you know they they only know what you tell them and if they don't take note of it then 
because they think it's irrelevant, then by the time the next patient comes in, they might have forgotten. Um, and it's, I mean, it's unfortunate that they don't have that, but I think uh, I've heard that some doctors are starting to move in that direction and um, sort of um, look for ways to network with patients online so that they can tap into that resource. Um, or even look at Facebook groups and see what people are posting there. Yeah, and I will see you guys next week.